Okay, hi folks, so welcome back and let's continue with this short introduction to transition into open phone 11. Okay, so now let's move to the to, 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 to the next tutorial. So we're working in the cylinder case, fantastic case, as, as I say, it's done many things with this case, but previous tutorial was raised on instead on a little bit. Now let's move to the same case always, but now let's do it supersonic. Okay, just to show you how to change a little bit. And from, from now on also I promise that in the first first five minutes I will try to cover everything and then this one just 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 switch video or move to something else. Okay, I don't get offended. So this case, cylinder here we have the tutorial. So the first thing is that as I say, we're going to do a supersonic case, okay? So as you said, you just need to get familiar with the new classes or solver. So in this case, let's see what is the thing that we need to use, the, the class. So basically, I uh, skip here, is this one, fluid, okay? Super cis, raw, simple phone, pimple phone, all these solvers, okay? So this is one candidate and the other one that I always forget the name is raw central phone, chuck fluid. I don't like to use this solver. This is explicit, have a terrible uh, time set constraint and it's fully, fully unsteady. Here you have the auction, save the transient and so on. So we're going to move here. We're going to think that we're going to use raw pimple phone, fully unsteady. You can do the same stuff using the steady, but personal experience working in open phone. Supersonic cases instead is a little bit tricky, so it's better to do local tiny stepping. Then we're going to do a lot of another video about that. So now we know the solver. Let's move to to the case. We have it here. So folder zero, nothing changed. I'm not going to talk about boundary conditions, whatever. Okay, you you. <clears throat> That is something that, that whether it's in some other videos now, okay, here's just the transition. So nothing to do here, but yes. So here, very important. And actually I still have the all here. I need to update this one. It's not transport properties or it is physical properties. Okay. So yet yeah, doing, doing since live. Okay. No script. So I have the error, but well, when you download the case, the case, you are going to find there the, okay, no, sorry. I was looking in the, in the wrong directory. Okay, this is the <laughs> tutorial tree. So see here that physical properties, but in any case, the other one is run also, and it's updated. So you have momentum transport, nothing changed, physical properties, okay? So I'm here with the top, this is, this substitute the thermophysical models, okay? And that's all, okay? You have it there. Then we move to system, and system, nothing to do. The only modification here will be control did for and run and fluid as we identify here. This is our solver and that's all you need to do. Then there are some other modifications that, but it's just those small keywords that you need to change. Okay. But for the rest, pretty much remains the same. So at this point, I have to say that that is all you need to know for this tutorial is you are transitioning. Okay. So now you can launch as you so launch your discrete and that's all okay something also that we're going to work here before giving you know, the green light to, to change video is that to see how to compute uh, <clears throat> a, the, uh, the <clears throat> alternative quantities using all this command here so in previous version it was something like this now it's done like this so at this point that's all if you want you can just skip video move to another channel okay and if you stay here we're going to come in a little bit more hopefully we're not going to yeah take half an hour okay so one important thing here is that we talk about older equations okay older equation means that we didn't have the viscosity component and that doesn't mean that the equations are easier to solve actually they are more difficult or it's more unstable because Viscosity is that that parameter that add you no know, stability to your solution. So we're eliminating that physical uh, viscosity. So to set up the Euler case, basically what you need to do is just go here, physical properties, and that's all. Put mu equal to zero, you no, know, the dynamic viscosity, and voila, you are done. Don't set this one to to zero; it will crash immediately. But this one is computed using this viscosity, so it's also zero. And that's all, okay? So I'm not going to comment anything here, so you can choose different models. 
and we are set to go. Very important, earlier equation, we didn't have viscosity, therefore there is no turbulence. So also you need to go here, laminar, eliminate all turbulence models, okay? If you use a turbulence model, also it will, it will crash immediately, okay? It's not compatible, so be careful about that. Know your physics, what you need to, to do. So when we go here in initial boundary conditions, you have U and P, standard fields, then T is the new field, temperature, okay? And if you had solved for turbulence, you, you will have found here like K, Omega, and whatever, okay? And also thermal diffusivity, turbulent thermal diffusivity, and so on. So here you have all your boundary conditions. I'm not going into details. I know that this is a hot topic, how to choose boundary con con conditions in open phone. And in particular, this setup is a little bit tricky, okay? But this is for Mac uh, 2, if I would recall, or 2.5. So velocity initialization, then using this boundary condition here, and you have the whole setup here, very important for compressible solvers and this is for every solver here you need to define the absolute pressure okay so you put here zero will crash because it means you are working in vacuum and navier stokes so there is not bad in the vacuum by the way i haven't updated the header but this is open for 11 okay so that's all when it comes to zero to constant then the final folder it is System okay, so all everything works the same way. So let me go open this, this control D, and this is also important. I recommend also to set up this in particular for compressible cases. So let me go close these files here. So if we go to control D, I can also close the the. So pretty much the same, you define your solver here and this setup exactly the same, just to men mention that also that just double time set, it works exactly in the same way. And I want to stress piece of phone doesn't exist anymore here, okay? Or the piece of loop, everything is pimple. So here you can adjust that, okay? And then we have here the function objects, a standard one. So this one to compute, no draw and move because they are not safe. Or they are computed, but they are, this field is not safe at all. Here, just expose those fields. Okay, important here, but for the forces. Okay, here to make another comment. We're working with other equations, so in other equ equations, y plus doesn't exist. So it is disabled. Don't put it because also it will crash, okay? Because it will try to access some quantities that we have set to zero, okay? But we have it here, and I put it here because the next case is a turbulent case, so all these fields are going to be enabled. So here I have two options, so y for y plus, something interesting that we're going to see in the next video. Then we have minimum and maximum values, and here we print everything. So important that we only have, we don't have access here to originally we we, we cannot print min, minimum and maximum for rho and mu okay but here we're able because at the beginning we have this option additional fields now right object we can okay expose those all those quantities now and then we can use it to 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 do <clears throat> some operations or to print values okay so that's all we go to as we skin nothing changed okay so a uh, better numerics i'm using here now because it's a quite severe case and then sv solution so sv solution also i'm not going into detail because it's slightly different from the compressible solvers no now the pressure matrix is not symmetric anymore now it's an asymmetric matrix so you can use so in other solvers, so you have to be careful about that. But pretty much it's the same concept, same idea. Okay, so these are the options. Okay, this is how we set up, I already co covered this. And then if I go to Transonic, this is an interesting option. This is the option that will let me use the, the, the raw pimple foam or raw simple foam for supersonic flows. Okay, so basically this is kind of, you are moving your <clears throat> pressure equation or you are converting that into your hyperbolic domain, okay? So if you try to run this one, you put this one to no, or you don't, you don't use this option by default, it's no, uh, it's going to, to diverge, okay? Because you, you have that problem that you need to, to solve a different set of, of equations. So this is something that you use for supersonic or transonic, or when you know that you have reached the critical Mach number, now the flow becomes somewhere locally supersonic. Uh, the, there are many options here, or not many, like five or four, I don't, I don't recall. So you are curious to know all the options that you can put in the pimple look here. I put this this location or in the source code installation, and you have the, some fleet solution controls since that you can enable, disable, okay? 
And finally, here we have the SV constraint. And this is very important, you know, depending on the severity of the case, what you are doing. This is just to limit some quantities. Now, so here we have this one I recommend it always to use when you have very severe case, cases now, compressible flows. So I'm limiting the, the temperature that cannot be less than 100 Kelvins or more than 1,000 Kelvins. Now, sometimes you know that you can have those those large oscillations and can make your solution diverge. So I always like to that to add that. Just to come in here that this used to to be you know, the way how you can activate the, the, the this this constraint you now according to time and duration, but it's not anymore used in Open Phone Eleven. I need just to put the took that here to use the new syntax. Then you have the limiting pressure, something like this, that you can limit the minimum and maximum. Okay, so this is pretty much a standard practice. So so not always is needed. It's needed when you have severe cases like this. So if you're doing supersonic, you, you need to, to limit this. I'm not going to comment that how, how it works, but basically it limits that your pressure cannot be lower than some some factor that, that is computed automatically. And that's all, okay? So this is the transitions. You see, it's quite easy. So at this point, let's run the case, okay? So, bam, 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 go here, run solver, and there you go. So at this point, it is running smoothly. Okay, no problem, I can come here also. We have, I put there also the new plug script to print you now the to plot the the coefficient so let me put it there so eventually we're going to see the time da, 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 da. so I'll see that everything that we're printing I didn't put the the mass conservation but it's the one you can add then in the previous tutorials we, we have it so as you can see here you have minimum maximum or your quantities a nice convergence right here okay it is in this case that we're getting out of the pimple loop okay in when we reach the maximum number of iterations okay so this this is telling you that it's not reaching convergence or probably I didn't define convergence I think in SV solution here yeah I didn't I didn't define so maybe it's a rubber maybe no who knows so you can see here the initial the final one let's see what convergence level we have so this is our conversion variable. So, so yeah, it's okay. So if I put it there, it will stop. So I wanted to check here. Okay, let me stop here. And there you go. You have your leaf drag coefficient, everything running smoothly, computing all your quantities. And at this point, let me open here the script. So just to show you how to compute also now the quantities, you can use the, the function object in line here to compute Mach number everything. Now you have here like white plus and that stuff. Or you can do it a posteriori when the simulation is done using now. It used to be the post-process command. Now it's the form post-process, form post-process. And this is how, how, how you do it. Okay, so you go here and this is simply form post-process, you need to, to say what solver you are using or what, what class. So pretty much will be the same as that you have here in control did. Okay. So I don't know. This is also something that I can criticize. So if you already have it here, there is no need to put it here, but yeah, you need to do it as stated in the doc documentation. So as you go here, form post process here. Okay. So it's not like I put it there because I want it. You have it there. No, so it stays. So I think it is redundant. Who knows? Let's see what the developers say about that. So as you see, quite simple that we set up here. So let's wait for the end of the solution simulation and then we post process the result. But basically what we're going to do is this exactly same results. Now, so here we have the Mach number, all the fields, but I like to see the Mach number. And then we have the gradient of density that we can use to identify now the chalk wave. Okay, so that's all. Okay, let's wait for the simulation. So I'm not going to show you all the stuff. So see you, see you, see you soon. Okay, in my case, I reached the end of the simulation. Oh, I think it's 0 0.2 seconds. It took a while because I'm running many things on background. So here we have, and also I, 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 I run in parallel in Syria, so you can run in parallel. Probably next case, let's do everything in parallel, so nothing changed. So I have the, we have here now the 
coefficient, the leaf drag coefficient, so as you see standard behavior. A little bit requires you now some care to see why this one is becoming no, not not closer to zero. This is still something I will say zero, but see that there is some shifting. Okay, probably shock wave or probably the mesh, who knows? So something that could be interested to, 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 to investigate. So at this point we have the solution, okay, and remember that we're computing, okay, in control the, this function object. So here we didn't put the function objects to compute no y, uh, y plus here, we cannot compute it with the Mac number and whatever, okay. But you can put it here. We took the this road just to compute it after the simulation, okay. So just to point out the discrete, okay, you can use renumber mesh exactly the same way. So this is the new command. And then to do that a posterior the post processing in this way. So see that we're computing Mac number, current number, vorticity, this entropy, whatever that means, uh gradient of U and gradient of row that the one that I like to use to compute uh density okay so it's this is the other transition that you need to do in uh, in open from a level okay because the old way was like this okay so just to end the post processing is pretty much the standard okay nothing new here so let me open okay apply okay apply skip zero time and here you can access okay let me put the latest time remember that those new fields you have it here at the end so you need to enable then so I will select all of them and then you just can look at your color so this is your quota number and recall that also we set the here the adjustable time step so the time step was adjusted automatically now just to reach this maximum quota number I don't like to use that Okay, but in single phase case, okay, we, we can use it, but for multi phase flows, I don't recommend you to do that. Okay, so you can look at current number, your Mac number, okay, and so on. You have all the variables here, you have the gradient of row. You can com compute, remember, you can compute this one also here. You now, in filters in part of you, you have a filter and you have gradient of constructor data set, I think, somewhere here. Okay, I don't recall, but somewhere here you, you will have to compute the, 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 the gradients. Okay, so and then you can animate since and this is your evolution. Okay, so now this is fully on a steady. Okay, this is time accurate. Okay, if you choose the, the good numerics, but you can do the same stuff uh, with a steady. I think it, it, it will run, but it's tricky. You know, generally speaking, when you have chart wave for steady solutions, cause they can be tricky to get it converged. But I think in this case, you, you you will get it. Okay, so I hope it didn't, <laughs> this one wasn't too long. Okay, so this is it for for the for the chart wave. So the only modification at this point is to identify the correct class, okay, to put in control did. The next tutorial will stay here, but we move to turbulent case, okay. So, so far we haven't enabled that. As you can imagine, it will be exactly the same, but just to mention a few comments. So that one, I hope, hopefully will be a short one. So thank you for your attention and please subscribe and follow off in YouTube and see you next time. Bye.